One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Land, Mike Henning here, coming to you today with the classic old banjo tune played on the guitar, Clinch Mountain Backstep, made famous by Dr. Ralph Stanley. This is a great old song, and it will give us some really good practice playing kind of some minor sounding notes over major sounding chords. So you get this really cool tension of the minor sounding lead notes over the major sounding chords, which is really cool. A lot of times it's called the mountain sound or, or in bluegrass it's called the modal sound. A lot of songs use this and a lot of these licks we're gonna use in this song, you could use in any of your favorite blues songs. I've got a basic A part and a basic B part and then a variation for each part. I'll break down all the solos note for note and then show you a bunch of backup stuff I would do. So how to play the timing of the, of the back step the extra two beats in the B part will work on that. You'll get some good counting practice in the backup section of this lesson. And if you're watching the preview of this lesson, you can head over to my website, mikeheadingmusic.com and grab the full lesson. You'll get access to watch all the videos and you can download the tabs and the practice tracks. All right, here's Clinch Mountain Backstep in the key of A. All right, so let's start breaking down this basic A part to Clinch Mountain Backstep. I've got my capo on the second fret. This song's normally done in the key of A, so we're kind of thinking in the key of G, but I've got my capo on the second fret that's gonna put us in the key of A. But you could also practice it without a capo if you want, but this song is normally done in the key of A. Fiddles and mandolin players will like it in the key of A. So that's why I've got my capo on the second fret. So let me play the first nine measures to start. That'll be like the basic A part, and then we'll start breaking it down. Here we go. Alright, so we're going to start with our pickup in measure one, and the A part will actually start in measure two. And a couple little quick things about this song. Um, this song is really good practice. One, we're going to get a good mixture of playing quarter notes and eighth notes, so some really good pick practice here, not rushing through the quarter notes, and then not playing too slow through the eighth notes. So really good practice on kind of playing some different rhythms. The other thing we're going to do with this song is... It's kind of what's called, at least in bluegrass, a modal sound or sometimes a mountain sound. And basically what that means is what we're playing kind of major sounding chords, but we're gonna be playing minor sounding notes. So we're not playing minor sounding chords, but we're playing minor sounding lead notes over major sounding chords, which gives us kind of cool, like they call it the mountain sound. It has this really kind of cool tension that I really love. Uh, Pretty Polly is another song that does that clinch mountain backstep. A lot of the stuff in that kind of Stanley Brothers, Ralph Stanley style were very popular in this kind of mountain or modal sound. So that's what we're doing. The other little tip is for basically for all the, the first frets on this song, I'm going to use my first finger. All the third frets, I'm going to use my third finger. So we're going to be kind of working this minor pentatonic shape that will break down a little bit more in a second okay so those are just a couple little tips all right so let's start breaking down the first nine measures here we go so i'm going to start with my third finger on the third fret of the of the second string 
basically, if you think about it, if you were in your, your G chord right before when you were strumming, that's the note. You basically just keep that finger down, and then we're going to go up and do third fret, and then first fret on the high E string with your first finger. So I'm doing a down up there, so four and. So you'd be like one, two, three, one, two, three, four and. And then we're gonna play like an opening melody line. Keep your first finger down, and we're gonna play three, third fret on the high E, and then back to the first fret, down to the third fret on the second string, back to the first fret on the first string. So you're basically working this little shape. And you could use your pinky up there on if you want to, but I like using my third finger because it kind of breaks up those notes a little bit. Gives a little separation between the notes, whereas if you did it this way, then this note's kind of hanging over. You could do it that way too, but I, I kind of like cutting that note off. So you go three, one, three, one, kind of back and forth. All down strokes there. And then measure three, a little ending lick. Move your first finger down to the first fret of the second string and do three, one. And then down to the third fret of the third string. Open. So that's kind of the opening melody line. So it's one, two, three, four, one, and two, three. Then we walk back up and do that same pickup. And then 3 1 again. And then a little run. Second string, 3 1, third fret, first fret. Keep that finger down, go down to the third fret on the third string. Back to that first fret. Again, we're kind of working these shapes. So, what's really important is you d don't do this. See, I'm always lifting that first finger up going to create a lot more work. Whereas if you keep your first finger down, you can just do that same move between the strings. See how much less work it is if, I, if I'm not doing this? It's so much more work. So keep those fingers down. And then again, we walk back up and then just a little run. So down up there. And then measure five, third fret on the second string and do down, down, up, down. And that's just filling up that measure with a, it's basically like a long note. We're just filling it up with some picking. And then we go back up, do our same pickup. And then measures uh, six and seven are basically the same as two and three. So that's all the same. Again, if you learn that first little part, you'd have basically a big chunk of the A part down. So, cause we play that exact same melody in six and seven. And then right here, we just do a very slightly different ending lick. We're gonna go back to the third fret on the third string, first fret, second string, and then third fret, second string, up to the high first fret, and then just back down the notes. We basically just walk up the notes and then back down. And then that down, up, down picking on the open third string. So not too hard. So let's practice that part, the second half. said really I think the trickiest part about this this basic a part is not rushing through the quarter notes and then playing the eighth notes with the correct timing the other thing that you just have to make sure is you keep your first finger down you know you're just gonna make it so much harder on yourself if you're doing that back and forth thing that we were talking about so keep your first finger in position that'll also keep you from moving up and down the neck more than you need to that's another common kind of beginner thing is is moving your hand a lot more than you need to if you keep your first finger down it limits the amount that you could move out of position. So that's, that's really important as well.
Okay, so let's play those first nine measures. Here we go. Again. 